Hi, this is Pastor Jimmy Lee. God bless and keep you. Um, yes, our God is a wonderful God. He is a beautiful God. He keeps every one of His promises. And He wants that happen in your life. So to receive that amazing gift, all you have to do is turn from your wicked way. Yes, turn from your life of darkness and see the light through Jesus Christ and accept Him as the best gift from God to you. If you do that, yes, yeah. you shall not be perished, but you shall receive eternal life in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, Jesus was sent by God to show that His promises is real. And through God's miraculous power, yes, that Jesus is still King of kings, Lord of the Lords, forever. Amen. And whoever accepts Him and who has repented his sin and received forgiveness through Jesus on the cross by Father God, then you shall have eternal life and strength and mercy and honor to glorify God. Amen. You know, uh, Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 to 20, this is what Jesus says after all his teachings, right? Right before he ascended into heaven. Jesus said this. It's very important. He says this. All authority in heaven and earth, heaven and on earth, has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always. To the very end of the age. Hallelujah. Okay. Yes. This is the promise. Also. That God says. You know what? Jesus. Son of God. Which is. You know. What is. Uh, son of elephant. 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 Right? What is son of God? God. So in the name of Jesus. God. Son of God. Promised. Hey. Teach them everything that I have taught you. But you have to live it too. Don't just teach them. You have to live it and teach. And keep them and keep you. Then I will be with you. You will see me in your life all the time. You want that? Yes, I want that promise to be done in my life. So we should examine, okay, what are the things that Jesus has taught? Today we're going to uh, share uh, important uh, sectors of that sections of that, which is Matthew chapter 5, actually to chapter 5 to chapter 7, mostly just Jesus compound the truth in it. But today we're going to share from verse 1 to verse 20. Shall we? Yeah. We're going to read it with you. They call it the attitude, which is the lifestyle that you have to live by. This is must. All right? Be yeah. attitude, chapter 5, from verse 1. Now when he saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside, Jesus, went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for there is a kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for the righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are pre persecuted, because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, 
and falsely say all kinds of evils against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Wow. Okay. Everybody started to follow Jesus because they thought that Jesus was Messiah. He's a deliverer. He came to reveal what God teaches. And they want to learn. Like, wow, everybody listening. But see, this is a teaching that unless you have a Holy Spirit in you, you will never understand. Because Jesus simply compact the teaching like... It's a power pill. You know, it's, it's hard to see what's in it. Even though you swallow it. it I mean, it's great, but what is it? <laughs> yes, so Jesus simply reveals it to you through his lifestyle. And he, he simply, uh, what he preach reveals in his life. Jesus says this is, this is like a step of a faith, step of faith from unknown about God. But God knows you, right? But you don't know God. But from that step of faith, from the beginning, how you grow, just like a prophet. People may call prophet. But Jesus is king of king. I mean, he's a messiah. He's way more bigger than prophet. He's a son of God. But God wants us to, Jesus wants us to be taught by him. There's a procedure in that. Yeah, man. Of course. Of course. So you have to see. You have to know how it is being done. Jesus says the first blessing is bless out the poor in spirit. So you must, since, okay, since God created you as a worshiper, that's what God says. So when he created you, you have a functionality inside of you. You have a, you have a system, systematic things built in you that you are longing for God. Yes, you are longing for holiness. You are longing for image of God. You have this thirst to worship God. Why? Because God, reason that God created you is to worship God. You are a spiritual being. You are not animal, okay? Yeah, I mean, yes, we understand. Uh, you have desires of the flesh, like animal instinct, all right? You want to be fed. You want to lay down. Yeah? You want to be happy, all right? All that, that's fine. You, but there are greater thirst in you because by being animal is not really being happy. No matter how great your barn is and no matter how great your uh, uh, food is, okay? It's all about higher standard, holiness. See, you may not know that yet, but there is. And that's ultimate happiness. And God wants you to draw to it. God is teaching you. Jesus is teaching us. First step of faith is you have a hunger in your spirit. Oh, I, I, feel, I feel lost without God. I feel poor without God. So poor in spirit. Amen. That's how it begins. Starting to see who you really are. That's a step of faith. You are more than an animal. Yes. Hallelujah. Then God says, well, there is a kingdom of heaven. That's how it starts. Then next step of faith. He says, blessed are those who mourn. Because you started to see that, oh my, I really need God. I have a thirst for God. Then you study to see, but you are too far from Him. Man, God is holy, you are not holy. So what happened? Well, you started to see the darkness in you, and you started to repent. Oh God, this ain't right. Help me, God. Wash my sins away. Jesus, I heard that you died for me on the cross. So what do I do? You start to moan. Yes, life of a repentance starts to happen. What is the gospel? Gospel is 
that you will be saved by Messiah, by Jesus Christ, by Him giving you forgiveness of your sin. So through forgiveness, salvation comes through Jesus Christ. Amen? That's the good news. That's the gospel. So, is that being done? You know, until now, when Jesus preached this in Sermon of the Mount, the Beatitudes, they don't know that he will be persecuted. They don't know that he will be crucified, okay? But Jesus knows. So Jesus simply laying it out. You know, I don't just say this. I do this. Wow. The people were dumbfounded when they were hearing that first. But they realized after Jesus was being crucified and took the cross and resurrected and God still showed. God's signs and wonders and miracles happens every day in the name of Jesus Christ who serves Him and believes Him in daily basis. So this is ultimate teaching that He wants us to learn. Then, okay, let's go to the next step. After you repent, then what do you do? Bless, will, bless are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. So, more you repent, which means not just regret, you stop doing your wrong deeds. You know, if you keep on sinning the same things over and over and over again, something wrong with you, man. Yeah, something wrong with you. But if you truly stop who you are and start God in your life, it's not regretting, it's repenting. Stop and start God in you. So if you do not accept God in you, which means the Holy Spirit in you, how can you start God in your life? You will always regret, 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 but you what? Nothing will happen, man. You're just going to get old and fat. So what do you do? You ask, fire of God comes into you. Let God destroy everything that was killing you. Let God come into you and kill the cancer in your life. Kill the poisons in your life. Let, let the pure fire of God come into you. And more you do that, more you do that, what happened? You will become meek. Yes, you will become a gentle spirit. You will become like, no more poisons in your life. No more assets in your life. No more angers in your life. What's been controlling you? Maybe it's the anger. Spirit of anger has been controlling you. Let that be kicked out in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let the fire come. Fire of God comes in and start to live the life of a meek. Yes. Gentle spirit. Then what happened? Wow. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Then what happened? He will, earth means you, your, your flesh. Because when God created you, He used a, a soil, right? Red soil. He forms you, then He breathed life into you. That's who you are. Adam means red dirt, right? <laughs> red soil. You are Adam's descendants. Wow. So... God will rebuild you, restore it, renew you, and you will become territory of God. You will become heaven on earth. Yes, that's the promise. Then there's a next step. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Now, now you started to see, wow, what it is. What's the promise of God? So what happened? Because you start to find out God is real, you will ask for more. You will seek for more. You will seek for righteousness. Yes. Then, He will fill you with the characteristics of God. You will become, you will start to become righteousness of God. You will start to have characteristics of God in your life. Yes. Then more you become you'll be filled with the image of God. Hallelujah. Then relationship will be better between uh, you, you and your family, uh, you and your children, you and relatives, community. Yeah. You will start to see. God does that. God does that. God changes relationships. Yes. 
Yes, he does. <laughs> Beautiful. And you will start to become blessed are the merciful. They will be shown mercy. And now, because your life is getting to the right track, you start to satisfy the promises of God in your life. Because of that, you will start to see more about other spirit, more about other soul, more about other people. And you will start to become merciful. Because God showed you mercy, and because you received mercy, you will show mercy to the others. You will start to see, oh, you want that person to be saved. You want, you want that orphans to be taken care of. You want that widows to be shown mercy of God. And yes. Why? Because you are starting to become free of yourself. And then you will be able to see others. The reason that many cannot see others' agony as their own only because they are full of themselves. Yes. You know, some people try to do things like, oh, I, I feel pity for that individual, but it is only to show himself better than the others. You know, that's not true mercy. Merciful heart from God. Mercy means see with the provision of God. See through eye of God. As a fair, as a mighty God sees, mighty Father God sees. Amen? And you will start to become more and more blessed. Blessed are the pure in heart, they will see God. And because you started to see others with the sight of God, with the eye of God, and you will start to see and feel what is really the heart of God, what Father wants. And God is a spirit, and now you are being led by spirit. So your spiritual eye actually awakens and opens and start to see God in your life. Like you go like, I see God. You know, God is not a human form. God is a spirit. But because you started to being led so strongly in spirit, you start to see, you know what? I know what God wants. And, and God speaks to you in spirit. Yes. You know, right now, uh, people who are hearing this on the hill of the mount, uh, uh, on a mount, and when Jesus was speaking the Beatitudes, hardly no one understood this. I mean, they may record it, but they understood this after Jesus was crucified, after Holy Spirit came into their life, after everybody experienced the day of the Pentecost in their own life. Then they start to see this is what Jesus was taught, teaching. And this is what I have to teach, and this is what I have to live by. Beautiful. Yes. And it's, this is what it says. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the sons of God. And now you start to see what was trouble in your life. So saying that, that, that thing that was a blocking between you and God, you start to see in other life. So what do you do? You start to want to break that wall. The wall of sin, the wall, wall of whatever. There was a blocking them to see God. And you start to want to be responsible. You want to fight against that for them, with them, for the glory of God. And you become a peacemaker. Wow. And if you do that, what is the blessing? And people start to call you, you are son of God. Man, I see God in your life. I, don't, I didn't know God, but if there is God... God must have a heart like you. Oh, isn't that amazing? Does that happen to you? I'm not just talking about being religious, okay? I'm not just talking about you, you know how to quote the words of God. No, no, no. And John 3, 16 says, okay, great. So do you live the life you wanted to live? And Jesus is keep on saying, hey, you know what? This is what happened. Blessed are those who are persecuted in the right, persecuted because of righteousness. Then, do you mind to be persecuted, to do what is right? Do you mind? Or like, no, I, I don't want to be persecuted. No, I, I want to believe, but not that much. <laughs> I want to follow God, but not. 
just in my bedroom, just in my living room, maybe watching through TV, seeing through YouTube, whatever. Right? But Jesus says, no. Proceed, man. Proceed. Do more. Be holy as your God is holy. Man, man up. And know how to fight for the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. That way, your life will be victorious. He doesn't want you to lose the battle, man. He wants you to win and win and win. He wants you to be an amazing gladiator for the glory of God. Yes. It is not to persecute you, but it is to let you live the glorious life, victorious life in the name of Jesus Christ. If you don't mind going through the persecution because of the righteousness, God says, you know what? Then surely kingdom of heaven is yours. Wow. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are, the, are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of Jesus, because of me, Jesus says. Yeah. You know, that happens still to me. Praise God. You know, of course, just being cursed at by someone doesn't mean that you, you, you are amazing. Of course not. But for the righteousness. We don't mind. So, come on. Let's go, right? Proceed for the glory of God. And this is what Jesus says. You are the salt of the earth. But if you salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. Okay, you are salt, but how salt make a taste? Well, being melted down. You have to be melt to be mixed. So you have to uh, become formless of who you are, willing to be melt to let the soul to be taste to the others. So Jesus says, hey man, if you don't want to be melt, how can you make a taste, right? You say, oh, I am a salt, king salt. But if you never melt, then what happened? It's a trash, man. If soul lose a taste, because you don't want to you don't want to be melt, so there's no taste. Then you'll be thrown out. It's still salt, but thrown out. Rock salt, thrown out. And who's gonna step you all over? Not God, by the people. Because you say about God, but you are nothing about God. So Jesus is afraid for you. Come on, man. And he continues. You are the light of the world. The city on a hill cannot be hidden. Because the city has a full of light. I mean, actually, right? Neither do people light a lamp and put it on the bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand. And it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. But if you don't have a light in you, which is a fire of God in you, how can you shine the light? So you have to become the light, which is you have to become a promise of God. Right? If, if you say to the others, oh, be well uh, uh, with your wife, but if you are not well, well with your own Wife, it will be funny, right? It will be, it will be wrong to say that. If you say, hey, open your eyes and, and see God. But if you, if you are your own blind, it will be ridiculous, isn't it? Yes, if you are light, God will let you shine. So don't talk about light. Be a light. Amen. Be a door. Stop being a talker. You know what talker is good at? Complaining. 
Always complain. Complain this, complain that. Professional complainer. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. That's a sin, man. That's a sin. It goes on. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law of the prophet. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. I tell you the truth, until heaven and earth disappear, nor the smallest letter, nor the least stroke of a pen will be any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Which means law means words of God, the promises, the Bible itself. All right? Everything will be done. Every promise in the Bible, God wants to reveal that in your life, every individual, every Christian's life. Yes, every child of God's life. That's what God wants. So don't skip it. Eat the whole words of God, like, and digest it. Maybe it, it's, it's kind of uh, 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 acidy in your mouth, but it'll be sweet in your stomach, as the Bible says. And it'll become your life. So digest it. Consumed by it. And you become the words of God. And Jesus says, anyone who breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called the least, the smallest, the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surface, surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teacher of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. Wow. Okay. How can you say if you are part of the kingdom of heaven, if you cannot even enter it? It would be ridiculous, right? So Jesus says, those who teach us, those say, oh, I am right. I am part of God's righteousness. But if you do lesser than those who records words of God, all the time. see, their job is like Bible recorder. Right? They write always, memorize always, and they know what to say about the words of God. But Jesus says, but your righteousness must surpass that. Which means it doesn't matter how much you memorize and whatever you teach, Verbally, if you don't live it. So don't just write the words of God. Write on your heart. And you become the words of God. You have to surface. Not just reading, not just memorizing, but become door, doer in the name of Jesus Christ. You become the words of God. Your righteousness has to surpass Pharisees. What, what are the Pharisees? Well, they knew how to worship God. They knew how to praise God. They knew how to dress like it. But you, you have to be more than that. You have to serve past that. You have to be bigger than that, better than that, more than that. By how? By living the words of God. By taking your responsibility. Know that you are salt and know how to be melt. So deny yourself, take your own cross and follow Jesus. If you do that, yes. And teach that. Don't just teach that. Do and teach at the same time. Amen. Then kingdom of heaven is yours. God bless you and keep you. Shalom.